Welcome to this video in our series on finding, computing eigenvalues numerically of a matrix. So in previous videos, we've already seen the power method and versions of the power method as a way to find eigenvalues. The standard way to do it is the so-called QR algorithm. In this video, I will talk about what is in between those two. So getting from the power method to the QR algorithm, there is something that is sometimes called orthogonal iteration. It is not a common name because this is more of a theoretical method, it's not what you would actually do, but it's a way to make clear um, how we can make this step from power method to QR algorithm. So let's see here, what do we have? I'm going to talk a little bit about orthogonal iteration, what it is basically like. I will use the QR decomposition in this algorithm. And I will give a short numerical example. Then at the very end, I will also sketch some of the disadvantages of orthogonal iteration, which is why it is not used as a common numerical method. But in, in, in fact, the QR algorithm solves these problems and that is what will actually be used in numer as a numerical method to find eigenvalues. Okay. So let's see, orthogonal iteration is a generalization of the power method if you would like to find not only lambda 1, the dominant eigenvalue, but a couple of eigenvalues or maybe all of the eigenvalues of a matrix. Subspace iteration is a different name for it. And it's a first step towards the QR algorithm for finding eigenvalues numerically. Now, the basic idea is that we do not do the power method with one vector. So we do not choose one vector x0 and then do the power method. We take a bunch of them. So let's say that we take k of them. So that's this k here. And I'm going to put them next to each other in a vector x0. So the, sorry, matrix. This matrix here, x0, so big x0. Well, it has a couple of columns. So x, so let's say 0, 0,1, a vector x0, 0, 0,2, up to a vector x0, k. So this is basically like doing the power method for k vectors at the same time. So the number of columns, so the number of columns here, that's k, and that's the number of eigenvectors that we want to compute. It should be then bigger than 1, otherwise we have the standard power method. And maybe it's equal to n, which means that we are going to compute all of the eigenvalues. And then we do this iteration. Well, this, this is not going to work great yet, but it's, it's the basic idea that we want to compute k eigenvalues at the same time. Now, we can immediately see that, that this is not going to work. So why is this not going to work? Well, all of the columns, so all of those vectors, all of those different vectors in x0, they will all converge to the same eigenvector u1 that corresponds to lambda1. So that's not what we want. Also, there is no scaling in here, which means that the columns can become very large or very small. We have seen for the standard power method that we'll we would be dividing by the length of the vectors in between to prevent very big, very small numbers. So we also need something like that here. So let's, let's do one step to make it a little bit smarter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the iteration a little bit. So I'm going to start with a matrix Q0 that has orthonormal columns. So that means that I already have some scaling in there because all the columns have length one. And that I also have different directions because if the columns are perpendicular, orthogonal, that means that they all point in different directions. So this is already better, but I'm going to do an iteration here. So I will have to do a QR decomposition also during the iteration. So this is going to be the, the, the basic first version. I'm going to take start matrix Q0, then I do A times Q0. This Q0 has K columns. Um, and then I do a QR decomposition. So the QR decomposition is that AQ0, I'm going to write it as Q1 times R1. This is upper triangular, and this one has orthonormal columns. And then all of the directions that you would like to keep are in this Q1 matrix. So then I'm going to repeat this process, and I'm going to work with Q1, and I'm going to compute A times Q1 
decompose that as Q2 times R2 and so on. And hopefully then the Q matrix, the K columns, will converge to eigenvectors. And then this R matrix is hopefully also going to converge and that is going to contain the eigenvalues of the matrix. So let's see. Here's the formulation. I'm going to choose a start vector with orthonormal columns. So that's why I call it Q. And then I'm going to compute matrices QI plus 1 and RI plus 1 such that A times QI is written as QI plus 1 times RI plus 1. So the Q matrices are orthogonal and the R matrices are upper triangular. Now, the range, so which vectors, which space is being covered by the QIs is the same as the XIs in the unscaled iteration. And because RI is an upper triangular matrix, its diagonal will converge to the eigenvalues of the matrix, so the first K eigenvalues. And that is particularly clear if you would take K equal to N, so we compute all of the eigenvalues, then if the Q matrices converge and the R matrices converge, Then in the end, so from this iteration here, if we have convergence, then we get Q times R as A times Q. In other words, R is Q transpose A Q. That's a similarity transformation. So R has the same eigenvalues as the original matrix A. And we have found the sure decomposition of the matrix. So let's see how this works numerically. So the matrix we have seen a couple of times already. I'm going to start my orthogonal iteration with the identity matrix that all the columns have length one and they're orthogonal. So that is an orthogonal matrix. And then in every iteration step, I compute the new QR as the QR decomposition of A times Q. So let's see how this works. So here are a couple of the iterations. So a Q matrix, an R matrix, a Q matrix, an R matrix. And what is interesting here, for instance, is the entries on the diagonal of the R matrix. So if you look here, then I've made a list with I being the number of iterations. R11, R22, R33, 5. So the diagonal entries of the R matrix, the upper triangular matrix. And you see that indeed they converge to the eigenvalues, if you recall the eigenvalues of this matrix, you see that indeed the diagonal entries of R converge to the eigenvalues of the matrix A. Now, this works here, but it's not perfect yet. So we still want to change the algorithm. And there are a couple of reasons for that. So I listed them here. So disadvantages are that if your matrix is dense, then it is quite expensive to compute the QR decomposition in every iteration step. Also, the starting matrix should be carefully chosen in the sense that all of the columns should have non-zero components in the directions of the eigenvectors you would like to compute. And finally, the convergence speed is essentially that of the power method without shift. So that is not very fast yet. So there is plenty of opportunity here to make this method better and that will lead to the QR algorithm which is the topic of the next video. So what we have seen is that we can generalize the power method to find K of the eigenvalues of a matrix and as an ingredient to that method, we'll talk on iteration, we can use the QR decomposition to make sure that we keep K separate directions in there. And we can further improve this. So, and the further improvement will be the QR algorithm for computing eigenvalues. So that will be the topic of the next video. I hope all was clear and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video in this series.